Hey guys, welcome to the next video in the Max Script video series. And today we are going to take a look at how we can iterate over arrays. So if we recollect, we can say that an array is similar to a collection of objects or a list. And hence, if I just wanted to quickly iterate over all the objects in the scene, I can use a for loop. That means I can just say for O in objects do print o dot name. So I have so many objects in the scene and I have printed the names of all the objects from box to the point helpers. If I don't want to print o dot name, I can print o dot wire color. So it will give me the wire color of all the objects in this format. And I can also say that I just want to print the position of all the objects. So I'll just say print o dot pose or you can just write position. So this is the simplest way of iterating over an object collection that we have in Max, or you can say it as an object set. Now, if we want to store this as an array, we'll say that uh, collection equals objects as array. And when I evaluate that, I get the whole list of array. So iterating over an array uh, in the first method, we can say that it's very simple. We just can use the same line. And instead of iterating over objects, we can say, let's iterate over the collection. Because the collection is basically now an array. So just let, let us just uh, print out the name. And uh, when I print out the name, it will again give us the same output from box one to point zero zero three, which is right here. Okay. So now what happens in this way of iteration is that the value of O changes in the whole array. So if I just print out the collection, we have box, geosphere, and teapot. That means whenever I'm iterating or traversing through the collection, the value of O will change from box to geosphere and it will keep on changing with every iteration till the time it reaches the last item of the array, which is the point helper point zero zero three. Another way of iterating through this same array is basically when you iterate using the item numbers. So let's assume that we have this collection as an array. And if we want to access the first item, we can say collection one. It will give me the first item. If I want to access a 10th item, it will give me Omnil light. Now, if I access 20th item, let's say, it says undefined because we are going out of bounds of the array. When I say out of bounds, which means collection has a count. Basically, it has a fixed number of items right now, which is 17. And if I go beyond 17, it will give me an error. So if I say 17, it will give me the last object of that array, which is 0 0.003. Now, there is another way of iterating through this array in which we are going to go from 1 to 17. So we'll ask Max to go from the first item to the nth item. Now, nth item is 17 here, so 17th item. And we will ask Max to fetch the value from that array using the index. So now we can say that 17 is basically the index of the item present at 17th position of the array. And if I say 10, it is uh, Omnilite, which means Omnilite is present at 10th index of the array. Now, if I just write this for loop, let's say for j in 1 to 10, do print j. So we see the output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it says OK. So basically, it printed from 1 to 10. But instead of that, if I say print collections item present at jth index, OK? So I'll say collection j, and it'll print from 1 to 10 all the objects with the specific index number. So when j is 1, it'll get the box. When j is 10, it'll get the only light. Similarly, if I replace 10 
by this collection dot count. That means we are asking max to go ahead and iterate from the first index to the last index and print out all the objects. Okay, so let's take an example. So this is for O in collection do print O dot name, which will print all the names from box one to point three, in which O will be referred to as the same object every time it iterates. So if we want a similar output, in the next for loop, while we are iterating from one to the number of items in that array, we will print collection j dot name. Now, if you see the similarity is here, we have used a shortened way. Here, it's a bit long way, but this kind of for loop is definitely going to be helpful. And we will discuss where this is helpful. So now if I evaluate this line, we get the same output. So basically it goes from box to point using this and it goes from box to point using this. So these are two of the simplest methods of how you can iterate over an array. Let me give another quick and short example. Let's say geometry is equal to geometry as array. Now I can use both the ways for O in geom to print O dot name. And I can say for O in one to geometry dot count do print O the print geom. And there you go. Uh, sorry, I just had to print name because we are printing the names and not the object itself. So I'm going to delete this part and there you go. So just two different methods, but the same results and their use cases will be different. So we'll discuss about the use cases in the upcoming videos, but this is it for the video and thank you so much for watching.